Okay, so enough with the waiting. We want to see these 3D creatures running as fast as possible away from the blue origin. I don't really know how to do that myself, so I'm going to use evolution. If you want more details, you can watch my previous video. Let's go! That's pretty cool! Wait, what the heck? Dang, this evolution simulator though, pretty cool stuff. Wait, what? That's not even a creature though, there must be a bug of some sort. Come on Carrie, you know the rules, it's evolution, anything can happen. No, no, that's not the evolution simulator I programmed. It doesn't have nodes, and it doesn't even have muscles. Did you just say I don't have muscles in my own video? Come on, you cannot be insulting me like this. <sighs> Okay, so you just admitted that was you in the video. What? No, I never said that. Can I please just get back to the evolution? Fine. But... If 
if anything like that happens again, I'm shutting it down! Okay, now that we've seen the 2,298 generations of evolution, I'd like to point out some things that I noticed along the way. So first of all, I didn't get to show you the worst and best creatures of generation 1. So the worst creature, it takes a lot of skill because you have to move exactly 0 meters away from the center. Well actually it was 2 millimeters, but essentially 0. And you can see the average of all the coordinates of this creature when it just flopped on the ground was right in the middle, pretty much as you can see by the coordinates in the lower right. The best creature of Generation 1 is pretty interesting because it's um, the best that random chance can do without any natural selection, and you end up with this. Oh, by the way, due to some bug that I'm gonna fix, um, the first generation of creatures, the randomly generated brains, don't have any accents of actual weight unless it's coming from the constant nodes of 1 at the bottom. Uh, so that means that there can be no conditional motion in these creatures at generation 1. Another thing is that during the breakthrough stage of the evolution, which is like, I'd say in the first 100 generations or so, the best creature can easily soar above the median because they were the first to find some major breakthrough and it hasn't spread yet. So you can see in this image of back in generation 92, the best is at 2 meters, but the median's still less than 0.2 meters, so it's a pretty stark difference, and that means that the media has a lot of catching up to do. Also, all creatures have a mutability variable, which essentially tells it how mutated its children can be. And this value can also be raised or lowered based on mutations, so that creatures can eventually settle on a rate of mutation that works best for them. But that means that at the very beginning of evolution, when you want to experiment with as many configurations as possible, the mutability rates can be very high, and you'll end up with this stage where like I said, the best is very far ahead of the median, but then the creatures go through cycles where the best slows down and then the median quickly catches up. So like right here, the median goes from like a little above 2 all the way up to like 5 within just um, like 50 generations, whereas the best kind of just stays in the 60s and doesn't really move. So I would call that like the great convergence, where suddenly now the median, 5.96, is pretty close to the best, 6.88, and the whole population has converged. And you can see that in the histogram too, like, do you see how... Well, if you ignore the big spike at zero, which always happens just from horrible mutants who cannot walk anymore, um, aside from that, you have a very gradual, almost Gaussian curve um, among, like, the healthy creatures, which is, you know, pretty normal. But then, once, once the creatures learn, like, okay, we don't have to mutate like crazy anymore to experiment, they all converge, like, shoop, and suddenly it's a very sharp spike. So that's the great convergence. And for a long time, you end up with this bathtub curve kind of shape where there's two peaks almost equal in size, um, with the, like, you know, incapable creatures and capable creatures. And what that means is that if you look at the histogram, uh, not the histogram, the line graph, 
Um, whichever line happens to be in the middle of that bathtub curve, in this case the 60th, 40th percentile, it will jump around wildly because there's so few creatures in this middle region um, to differentiate it. So very slight changes in, this, in the heights of these peaks will make that 40th percentile line jump from like 2 up to 8, now to 2 up to 8. So yeah, yeah, that's a very clear trait of the bathtub curve. Um, and in other simulations I've run, eventually if you just let it run for longer and longer and longer, like 2,000, 3,000 generations, when they eventually plateau like this, all the lower percentile lines will start to catch up to the median, and the big peak of incapable creatures will shrink and shrink and shrink. That kind of didn't happen here. Like here, at the very end, you can see that the 40th percentile is still miles behind the median, which is not good if that means that over 40% of your creatures are not up to par. But I think if I were to run this longer, they would eventually catch up. But like, you wouldn't see much change in the results of the best and median, which is what I care about. So I'm not really going to run it for that long, especially since I've been like waiting so long to get this video done. I'm just going to go with what I've got now. There was a small convergence here where I thought all the bad mutants were starting to improve and converge to the median, but it clearly didn't last. I don't really know what causes certain convergences to last and other ones not to, but you know, like sometimes you see evolution go backward, like here, but it's all part of the slow and um, unpredictable grind upwards in the long run. Okay, so let me talk about the neural networks. There's 10 outputs on the right side, right? Because there's 4 nodes and 6 muscles. Well, the nodes can't really do anything, so the 4 outputs on top are completely useless. They might as well not be there, so I don't even know I have them, but I might have a use in the future. But that means that only the bottom 6 output nodes, the ones that control the muscles, are important. Those are the ones that determine whether the muscles should contract or expand. And if you look right now, there's actually only one muscle that's going from black to white, black to white. Um, and that's the only one that's actually driving motion forward, which is pretty inefficient if you think about it. If you have, you can actually see which one it is. It's this one between the two maroon nodes, right? You can see it's like changing in width. Actually, I should do the inverse of this, where if it's contracting, it's thicker, and if it's expanding, it's thinner, so that like area stays constant. So I'll fix that in the next version, but for now it's flipped. Um, so, so, so like clearly if you have six muscles and you're only moving one of them, that's not very efficient. There must be better ways or more forceful ways to, to create that motion. So I, I think it happens like around this jump here. I'm not really sure, but by this point, okay, it's kind of starting to happen here. There's kind of 1.5 of the muscle nodes changing from black to white. The one that's second from the bottom is kind of like going from white to gray, so it's kind of like starting to catch on. But then by like generation 700, I bet both of- no, not quite. Maybe, I don't know. By generation 1200, you can see there are two nodes that are flickering from black to white, and they're doing it um, in synchrony, which makes sense. Yeah, you can see them both here now. The ones that are both contracting and expanding at the same time. So now there's twice the force which means that there's twice the distance it can expand and contract, kind of. So I would expect that to make it run faster. So let's just do a step-by-step -step generation to see what they look like up close again. Um, but I'm, I'm not really expecting to see anything interesting because by now they all look the same. By the way, I guess as these are running, I could talk about how um, neural networks... Oh, this one died. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. 4.3 meters? That's like a third of its potential. Oh well, that's really sad. But the reason it went down from 5 nodes to 4 is because the 5th node was always ending up just in the center of the creature, just kind of jiggling around, and it didn't look like it was actually helping in the movement. It was just a burden. So I got rid of it. Because that also makes the simulation run 33% faster, since there's fewer nodes, fewer muscles, and fewer neur neurons to calculate. Anyway, I think you've seen- oh, this one died instantly. I think you've seen everything there is to see. Let's just click finish. And by the way, because it's 3D now, drawing 1,000 creatures to the screen takes a long time. Well, maybe it doesn't take a long time, but I'm just really inefficient at it. But, like, that sorting animation where they slowly move across the screen, that was like playing at one frame per second, and it was just really frustrating to have to sit through that every single time. So now when you click sort, it sorts them instantly. A little less exciting to watch, but whatever. So here's the best one, 14.49. and. All the ha top half are going to be in the 14s because the median is so close to the best. But once you get below the median, it quickly drops. So here's like 6 meters. Gonna die soon. 
Gonna die in two meters. One meter left before it dies. Oh, I called it crazy, right? O OMG. OMG. Okay, reproducing. Going back. And yeah. Hey, so thanks to you who watched through this painfully long video. If you like what you saw, I'd really appreciate it if you could support me on Patreon. Because right now I'm working for free! <laughs> In future videos, I'm going to be trying what a lot of you are recommending, which is more advanced AI, like recurrent neural networks and long short-term memory networks. So yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, you know where to go, here.